Hey fellow Star Wars citizens, Scrapjet here. In today's video, I thought I'd go over uh, the top 10 things I wish I knew when I first started playing Star Wars Citizen. And I'm doing it in kind of a long format. Um, this time around, I'm not going to do a little 10 minute video. Uh, and I'm actually going to, I think it'll be more interesting to see it in use rather than just, you know, little, little uh, snippets of, you know, press this button and this happens and, and uh, you know, that sort of thing. So we're actually going to um, run a bunker mission and a uh, uh, bounty mission. And uh, right now I'm actually on my rescue Pisces, which is very useful if you're running bunker missions, because I usually get shot. Uh, so anyway, uh, but the, it, what I'm doing, though, is I'm actually my rescue Pisces is inside my C2. So I've kind of turned my C2 into like a mini Carrick. Yeah. Okay. I can't. Uh, I can't respawn here. But if I get hurt, at least I've got a med bed handy. Not as good as the Carex, but yeah, it'll do. And a pinch, you know. And then I got my Ursa. Um, I don't actually worry about uh, unfriendly bunkers anymore with turrets. I I've gotten pretty good at blowing the turrets, actually. So I'm not. I don't really use the Ursa for that. It's more for when I go to the bunker and I can't. Uh, land right next to the uh, right next to the bunker. I'll drive this little puppy in, you know. Plus, it makes it easier to strip armor and stuff like that. So, anyway, yeah. So right now I'm on my C2, and we're gonna go run a bunker that will allow us to uh, go through a couple of the um, couple of things on my list here. And, uh, and if you're interested in playing Star Wars Citizen, make sure to use the referral code listed here and also in the description. You'll earn additional credits of uh, game money when you do. And if you're a subscriber, leave a comment with your referral, co with your referral code. I'll uh, randomly choose someone's referral code and promote it in my next video. Alright, let's get started. All right, so here we are at uh, Everest Harbor. Um, I just need to check a few things first before we go on our bunker mission. Um, and this will cover probably a couple things. On my list. One of them is... Uh, Pads. All space stations now have a set of pads, so you don't actually have to land. Uh, if you need to go run an errand, like, you know, pick up ammo or food or something, you can just uh, land on one of these pads instead of going the whole, going through the whole process of uh, landing in the hangar and then checking your ship in and all that. You can actually land at a hangar, and it looks like one of them is available down here. Um, like I said, all stations have them. You just need to look for them. Uh, since I fly out of Everest Harbor, I know where their pads are. And looks like I should be able to, And believe it or not, I can actually land a C2 here. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, because it's a big ship. I don't know, I, I don't think you could do a Carrick, but I can just fit a C2. So this pad right here is free to land on. Uh, you don't have to request or anything, and... Very often you'll see actually probably several ships, um, several ships landed on these things. And it just worked out right now that nobody else is on here, so I'm going to snag it while I can. Um, and very often if, if I can't, like if there's another ship or there's debris on it or something, I'll just park to the side. I won't even park on the landing pad itself and I'll just EVA over. But uh, this is really kind of handy. You know, I, I would much rather do this than, than, uh, there we go. So it's a, it's a tight fit, but it can be done. So that is one of my tips for, uh, for new players. Uh, you'll probably end up living on a station and it's good to know where the pads are. And like I said, I know where the pads are on uh, 
Everest Harbor here just because I spend so much time here. So I need to run in and I think I need to get some ammo. I'm starting to run with a uh, uh, Karna rifle. And supposedly, according to my peeps at Star Citizen Friends Mentoring, the Karna rifle is a uh, is a little OP right now in terms of damage output. So we're going to try that at the bunker and we'll see how that works. Yeah, send that to the lower deck. I'm pretty sure it's a Karma rifle. Isn't that what I got? I've been switching between a couple of them recently. Uh, so there we go, this guy. Yeah, corner rifle. They're supposed to be really awesome, so we'll find out. Anyway, you don't need to, like I said, you can just land on this pad, you can just take the elevator in. Um, you can, If you want to take a note of which pad you're on, that's fine, but you'll see a little marker, like I see right now, they're telling me uh, pad two for the Hercules. That is funny, though, it tells me about the uh, Pisces as well. <laughs> Yeah, that's coming in handy. I've been running with it now for a couple of days. And it's nice having a little med bed. I mean, I've, I've used the Pisces before just to, uh, you know, just run bunkers. But let me tell you, the C2 running bunkers is bonkers. It really is. Uh, especially if you're doing unfriendly bunkers. I can easily take out the turret with... Uh, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I am not checking in, man. No checking in here. We just go do our thing. So, let me see. What's my food look like? Nah. Let's, let's go get one more drink, because I don't trust one. Always take at least two. And I'll tell you what I really like are the... Uh, um, I forget what they're called now. One of the drinks downstairs. I might pick one of those up, too. Um, a smoothie. Yeah, smoothies. They're, um, they're really good. They, they're very nutritional, as I found out. They definitely cover both your, your thirst requirements and your hunger requirements, so I usually try and get some of those. Anyway, we're just going to go pop down to the gallery, uh, make a little purchase. My C2 is sitting there happily on the pad. It'll sit there for, I mean, you could be there for hours if you want to. Uh, and I'm, and of course, thanks to Pez, ship, people's ships stay there. I don't know how long, I don't know when garbage cleanup happens. But, <laughs> we'll put this actually in our backpack. Karna. So cool that you can buy weapons here now, too. All right. Yeah, we'll buy... Let's take eleven. Good purchase. Mm hmm Okay, so now that I've got that. What does my uh looks like I already have enough just for you know, but it's good to have some extras. Cause I chew through ammo. <laughs> Usually not hitting anything, but I chew through it. Alright, so now that's taken care of. Uh, hang on some hams. And as you can see, it tells us where our ship is back on pad two, because I always forget. And we'll we'll cover a couple things while we're here. Once we get in 
in the ship. I really do love this new elevator they designed <laughs> with the with the little rails. This this elevator used to float, and it was the stupidest looking thing. I hated it, but I love all the little detail, the lighting, and everything. Much nicer. And as you can see, I make a mess <laughs> when uh, when I'm running bunkers. I just leave drinks right there, and I'll be interested to see when it finally cleans up, if ever. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. It's been like that for a couple of days now. All right. Try not to bang into the hangar there or the pad entrance. Okay. So we're just gonna mosey on over here, and it is how we're not actually in the station obviously but we're still within the armistice zone so if i let's say i just forgot something and i don't feel like landing again i can actually access my inventory from here outside of the ship of outside of the station within my ship so see this is local this is all the stuff that's actually at the station um in fact, we're going to transfer that 11 over since I don't actually need it. And so anyway, uh, being able to access your inventory from uh, from the armistice zone without actually being on the station is one of my tips as well. And that's tip number two. So the what I usually use this for, and I think everybody else does too, I'm sure. But if you're a new player, you probably wouldn't think to do this, but... When you run bunkers, you run a lot of them. You're not going to just run one bunker and then call it a day. So uh, very often I'll run out of ammo or low on ammo. I'll fly back up here to station and, you know, grab some ammo. Um, or maybe I need some more med pens, you know, or maybe I realize, yeah, I really should have brought that uh, tractor beam with me last time. Or maybe I need a crypto key or something like that. So. It's great that you can just access your inventory like that. It really is, is very, very useful. So also I noticed, uh, we'll do one of my other tips here. As you see, I'm starting a little thirsty. So let's take my helmet off. Uh, we'll leave it in the vehicle so I don't fly off without it. Do I have any sustenance over here? No drinks. Okay, so I'm going to use all my own drinks. <laughs> I should have gotten more drinks. All right. So we'll take this guy, cruise pulse, put it in my hand. Now for the longest time, I thought this is how you drank. You click the left, left mouse button once, and you drink a little swig. And then you'd have to drink another little swig. Now right now about 100%, but, you know, I might need to drink the whole bottle. And, you know, this was just, oh my god, so time consuming. Then I learned... Uh, I forget where, but if you hold down the left mouse button and don't let go, just hold it down, you will drink the whole, the entire contents of the bottle, which is great. So there we go. I just drank the whole thing and then it stopped. And then release from the mouse, release the mouse button and we're good to go again. So let's, uh, I don't know, can I put this somewhere? I don't know. Let's see if I can put it on a shelf here. Kind of wish they came with some kind of. Oh, there we go. Nice. You know, I said they came with some kind of trash can. You know. <laughs> um. And then I'm gonna put my helmet back on. And then so that's drinking. And now here's another tip. Let's say I want to. I I just want to move this one item over to local. There's two ways you can do it, and this is the way I've I did it for the longest time. I would drag it over here, and now before I started playing, before Move All showed up, so I used to do back and forth a lot um, for individual items or to get all the items over. 
But let's say you only want to move one item, either from local to your personal or, or vice versa. You can just hold down the shift key and click on the item and it immediately pops over. So you don't have to drag and drop. You can just hold down shift, left click, and there it goes. So that's, that's pretty handy. I like that a lot more than dragging and dropping. So there's another tip. All right, let's... Hop in our seat. All right, so let's take a bunker mission. See how good this corner rifle really is. Uh, mercenary. We'll take a guard. And of course, you always take a call to arms, which actually, this is a tip too. Just always take it as soon as you start the game because you never know where you're going to kill somebody. <laughs> you might as well get paid for it if you're actually doing the job. All right. And there we are. Oh, I forgot to put up my landing gear. Eh. Someday they're going to make that cause damage, you know, if you forget to put your landing gear up, like when your gear rips off or something as you're flying through space, I don't know. Make some consequence there to it. And of course it's dark. Lovely. Make sure we're not flying upside down. I've done that once or twice and it's a harrowing experience when you first realize that you're actually flying into the ground and not, you know, up. Hey, I'm loving my C2 for really just about everything. I think if I could strap a mole to it, I would go mining with it. That's the only thing I, or maybe a vulture for salvage, you know, strap one of those on too, because so far I'm, I'm doing bunkers. Um, I'm obviously doing cargo and I've been doing uh, bounties with it. So, you know, what's not, what's not to like? And you can sleep in it. Which is awesome. Now yeah, it looks like we have company down there, which really just means that there's probably lots of junk right around the uh, bunker. Which I hate, because that means I can't park very close. But that's why I brought the Ursa, which is fine. Landing gear. Okay. Eh, let's see what we have to work with here. Oh, all right. So we're kind of in the front. Although with the Ursa, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to park. I'm just going to land nearby. I'm not too worried about distance. Just gotta watch out for those old spikes sticking out of the ground. They're a real pain. Alright. It's also a good idea to um, press Alt Zero and extend your. Yeah, see, there's a spike. Extend your ramps so you can tell 
when you land if you're actually touching the ground. Uh, looks like we're touching. That's good. Close them back up. Turn off the lights. Engines. Alright. And lower deck. Engines on, lights on. I don't know why the lights don't actually show until you like leave the ship. There we go. Now I'm not going to bother closing my ramp, although you really should. I no, ugh. I never have problems with it really, so I don't really worry about it. And man, I hate the tail lights on this thing. <laughs> it's wow. See, lots of junk. I'm not even going to close this. <laughs> I'll leave it open. All right. So, I these if you're not familiar with how these um guard facility against threat missions work, there's three waves of uh, six dudes. You know, that uh, pop out. Uh, as soon as I get down there, I'll have a minute to do whatever I want, you know. Usually I go to... I, I like to start in the... I call it the computer room. See, the timer started there at 50-some seconds. Just got to make sure you know where the computer room is, of course, because sometimes it's down here, sometimes it's up... Usually it's upstairs, but... Let's go see. Also, keep an eye for any red boxes. Which I haven't seen any yet. Oh my god, look at all the guards. <laughs> get away, guys, get away. I hang back here and wait until... Oh my god. Really? Let's also reload and... Let's see, I want... I don't want bur or Yeah, I want burst, I think. This is going to be a problem. If there's anybody in there. Oh, good. There he goes. Keep going. Keep going. Also, another tip. Oh, yep. There's a guy. He's dead. Okay. Um, Q and E. Let you kind of peer around, you know, tilt a little bit so you can peer around corners. So there's E and there's Q. So you press it once and I go to, press Q once I go to left, press it again I stand up straight. Press E, go to the right, press it again, I'm up straight. So that's really helpful for going around corners and whatnot. Uh, so anyway, I got three guys left. Let's see if we can help out a little bit here. 
Oop, guard. Don't shoot the guards. Uh, so you gotta run in front of a guard, which I don't like doing, because I'll probably get shot. Okay, yeah, you stay there. Yeah, let's see if I can do this without getting killed. <laughs> he must be downstairs. There's only two guys left. See, I can peer. Oh, there's only one guy left. Ha! Huh. Guards did a lot of work. Wow, okay, he's upstairs. So I can see the, the last guy gets a little marker on him. Oh, and that's it. Well, okay. I only killed one dude this time. So I reset. Go back to the same spot. Peer around the corner. But yeah, uh, um, my peeps say that um, one burst shot from this guy, if you actually hit the person, should take him down in one shot. So, we're going to kind of test that theory today, hopefully. As long as the guards don't do as good a job as they've been doing. Actually kill everybody. And we are live now. Okay. Of course, oh, no, there we go. So let's see, right on. Boom. Of course I missed. That time I hit him. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, okay, so I... I did kind of miss, but... But for the first shot, but... No. Okay... Nope, guard. Whoa! Jeez! I can't hit him. Oh no, oh no, no, no! Okay, here's how you do a med pen. <laughs> Press C. And then, um... Left click. And sometimes you don't have a lot of time to do it, so... Crap. Also, watch your ammo count. <laughs> oh, man. Where are they? Oop, there he is. Okay, one guy left. So yeah, med pens are uh, really a requirement. <laughs> you can't, uh, I can't, I mean, the other, the other option is the medical device. I forget what it's called, but a med pen is to me, I think is a better, oh, come on over here, dude. I think the med pen's better, honestly, just because it's a faster, it's faster than using the medical device. Okay. Well, I got him with the first shot. Oh, well. <laughs> well, this only has 11 rounds. That's not good. That's not good. Um, try enough. Yeah, I know, but 11 is not going to be enough. Man, I hope I didn't chew through all my ammo already. That'd be horrible. Uh, I think I have time here, right? Yeah, oh, that's the... Ooh. Man. Okay, well... This is wave three, so we're just going to have to be... choosy about our targets, I guess.
I guess I should have brought that ammo I bought. <laughs> and looks like we're not getting anybody in this elevator. Usually I wait until I hear some shooting. Sometimes the elevator's a little slow. Yeah, I'm not hearing any. There we go. Okay. So, I think we're pretty safe to assume this elevator is empty. Do we see anybody? No. There is an elevator over there. So... The last time I went up there, there were like three people in there. Stop any guards left. And I'm really low on ammo. Not seen anybody. Must be downstairs. Good lord. Ah, see, I gotta make every freaking shot count here because I got no bullets left. Uh, darn it. was coming up. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of them. God damn. And I missed both times. I think we're going to switch to a sniper rifle. Gosh, I got one left. One round left. All right. There we go. Actually, at this point, I should have a marker. Whoa. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Come on. There we go. Oh, now we have a marker. Okay. And how much? Yeah. I might be able to do it with this. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I couldn't. Oh no! <laughs> well, crap. 20 minutes later. So we're back at uh, the bunker, and I don't know why I parked way out here.
Okay. Let's wrap this up. There. Jeez. <laughs> Fine. Let's go get my uh, armor. Where did I die? I died right here. Oh, man. Wasn't it right here? Yeah, it was right here. Oh, sucky. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, wait. No, here I am. Duh. Okay. Not used to the blue armor. Ah, uh, you know what? Wait a minute. Should I, like, equip? Is that how that works? Yeah, equip. Does that transfer everything? No. So what do I have now? Oh, great. Okay, well. Eh, probably not exactly what I meant to do. All right. I should have probably just taken on taken off my tidy whities uh, Let's equip this, and we'll walk out with the. Uh, oh. Drop that. Get my helmet back. Nice. Get my armor back. Cool. Uh, is that my class? My corner rifle. Rifle. We'll drop the FS9 because I got a bazillion of those. Whoa, there we go. All right, equip that and we'll carry the. We'll get my suit. All right. So that was a little, took a little longer than I thought it would, but, you know. But yeah, those med pens, like I said, that's huge. Bring med pens. <laughs> I know a lot of people like the, uh, oh, come on. A lot of people like, per prefer the uh, medical device, which is good. It's good to have one. But... Med pen, you press C to take the put the med pen in your hand, and then you uh, left click once. And let me tell you, that's when you have seconds. You know, you know it's time to fiddle around with a med pen or with a med device thing. Med pens, so I think it's a better way. I think it's a better process for emergencies. Let's put this guy in there, sir. And just make sure you have them stored on your hip. Like, uh, I don't know if I still have it. Did I run out? Oh, you know, I ran out. 
Uh, let's run back in and get some from people. Because this is something else you should do too. Whenever you're in a bunker, you know, and you're uh, going around looting, look for med pens. They're 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 like a hundred, um, hundred credits each, so they're not cheap. And most NPCs will have them on them, so you, know, you don't have to loot the whole body if you want to grab the one med pen. You know, grab a handful while you're here. That's yeah, like I said that's a couple hundred credits you can save yourself. So let's see if there's any bodies left. <laughs> oh, not that guy. Oh man, if all the bodies disappeared, they did. How about the one guy just killed? He will probably have a med pen. Yeah. So, there we go. So now I, I double clicked on it and it immediately puts it on my hip there. It was where it needs to be in order for you to access it. If it was over here in, in my backpack, I wouldn't be able to get to it. So, double click on it and it ends up on your hip. And then just press, if you need it, just press C and that's in your hand. Then if I left click, it would stab me with it. If you want to use it on a buddy, let's say I wanted to huh, bring this guy back to life. If this was one of my buddies, just crouch near him and right click instead of left click. And it'll try to give uh, that person the med pen. Um, sometimes it, you have to get really close. So sometimes you have to like jostle around a little bit. Um, and this is actually where the uh, where the medical device actually is better, I think. Because with that, you just kind of point it at the person and fire and it'll... Uh, there we go. And it will, uh, you know, bring it'll, it'll bring the person back to life. So basically, uh, yeah, all the people are gone. So I guess I'm not getting any more med pens unless there's one in here. Let's see. Yes, there is. So double click on that. And here's a med device. I'll just put that in my backpack by pressing shift click because that's easier than dragging and dropping. And here's a refill. I'll take that too because med pens, both med pens and these med devices actually both run out over time. Well, the med pen runs is a single use item. The uh, med device, you can use a couple times before it finally runs out, but you can, you can also get a refill, a re little uh, refill uh, cartridge for it. So, and actually the, the med devices, they're worth like 700 credits when you sell them. That's a good deal. So I usually try and collect them when I'm out here doing bunkers to sell them as well. Because, you know, like I said, you get 10 of those. That's 7,000 credits. <laughs> that's like half of what you, uh... Yeah, I mean, you won't find 10 here, but you'll find a couple over... You know, if you're running a bunch of bunkers back to back, you'll easily get 10. You do like three or four bunkers. Like I said, that's seven grand. Sure, I'll do that. All right, so back to the C2. I'll get my uh, more official undersuit on. And you know, I'll close up from the front. Internal engines, internal lights, Alt Zero to close the door in the back, and we're ready to go. Let's see if I can figure out how to navigate all this junk. Ugh. All right, there we go. And I'm not going to bother backing in. <laughs> I'll just pull straight in. There we go. And lights. Ooh, no, lights. There we go. The sad part is I didn't get to uh, 
demonstrate the wonders of uh, of the uh, bed on the Pisces, which is very handy. I'm telling you, I mean, I died this time, unfortunately. Usually, I get I get hit once, and I use the uh, use a med pen to keep me going, but I'm not at full strength. So I'll come back here and I'll rejuvenate in that guy. Very handy. Yeah, we still have five minutes to get out of here. Plenty of time. I never thought having to show how to use a med pen would be so, uh, you know, it's like, oh my god, I got hit. And as you see the, um, I was dying pretty quickly there. So you, you only have a few seconds, like 15, 20 seconds to uh, get yourself going there, get yourself, get to get a med pen and uh, use it. And we'll head down. Uh, restart the quantum drive. Head on over to Perlman. I don't know if you've ever noticed if you've done um, delivery missions or if you run cargo. Uh, you'll, you'll see fighters, like single seat fighters, <laughs> just land on uh, pads at mining stations and then just fly away. And I, for a while, I didn't know what was going on. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be, like I was flying my C2 doing cargo and I'm thinking, oh man, I'm going to get a shot. This guy's good. This guy's just waiting for me to take off and then he's going to, you know, pirate me or something. I don't know. And uh, no, they never did. And that's not what they were doing. They really had no interest in me at all. And I'll show you why here in a minute since we get over here to Perlman. Oh man, unless there's somebody else already on the pad. People. Mm. I haven't picked I haven't picked a server with only 18 people on it and I managed to find the one site where somebody was looks like it's more than one too oh my god there's three I mean obviously they're they're really not there they're just ships that are hanging out from previous uh, folks but still okay looks like they're not on the pad that's good there's two pads that's right we're good we're good. Two Cutlass Blacks and a Valkyrie. That's funny. Alright. That's good. Kill the power. So, uh, what you can do, uh, like, between bounty missions, uh, assuming that you've maybe you've used up your missiles or you've taken damage, you actually have access here to uh, vehicle maintenance services. 
just like you do with hangers, you know, you can repair. I'm shocked that was only 73 credits worth. Uh, you can uh, refuel, which I'm not going to do because I don't do that with my C2. Or restock if you've gone through some missiles or uh, consumable ammo, you know, like ballistics. And just like on the C says now, no service required, which is basically uh, just like a hanger. So that is one of my other tips. You can use uh, pads at mining stations to restock, refuel, and rearm. So that, that's awesome. And while we're here, we're going to take care of a few others. So let's go down. Head on over to one of the buildings. I'll show you something you definitely need to know to, how to do if you're new to the game. deck. Back in a minute. Wow, looks like somebody had a bad day. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to one of the, go over to one of the buildings here. Probably storage. We'll start there. Now, everybody's upside down. Alright, so right now it does not appear to be windy. And I don't know if I mean, this happens to me a lot. If I'm doing box delivery missions or I'm doing running cargo, if I go up these stairs and it's windy, I can pretty much guarantee you I'll get blown right back down here and incapacitated. And that just really ruins your day, you know? Well, that's a terrapin. Cool. Um, so to get around that, you know, the wind's starting to pick up. Good, good, good. Not that I want to get incapacitated, but what I do is, as soon as I hit get the stairs, press control and crouch. So you just press control, and you kind of like, uh, you know, and you can walk like this too. So, you know, and I found that keeps me from being blown down the stairs. And I stay that way. Ooh, why is the sun... Oh, the sun actually is going down behind the C2. Okay. So I stay like this the whole time I'm going in. I do that. I I because I've actually been sucked out of the of the uh, airlock here. Alright, now I can stand. Now it's safe. So that's what and you do that when you're leaving also. Uh leave coming and going down up and downstairs. Even if you don't hear any wind, just do it, believe me. There have been times where it's like, where where was the wind? I did not hear any. And yet, I got blown down the uh, stairs. Or out the airlock. I mean, I've been blown out the airlock probably a good 20 meters off of the uh, off the stairs. It was crazy. So, yeah, just crouch and walk. And don't run, because that uh, that's a problem. Alright, so that's one tip. Another tip is, uh, you don't have to pay for food. Ever. Don't, don't pay for food come to a mining station and you see these little white kind of grayish dingy boxes down here these loot boxes if you crouch in front of them and um, hold down the F key and click on loot they're loaded with food I mean there's really no reason for you to pay for fluids shift click shift click buy me an apple or buy get me an apple three apples actually that's good all the bars you know you don't need to pay for any of that. Just come here. You know, you're here anyway, probably uh, rearming, restocking, you know, whatnot. And in fact, I do this and I'll transfer to the station. So I'll always have uh, free food there. So that's another tip, which is very, very helpful. Uh, like I said, because you, you, you just, why pay for food? You don't have to, you know. You really don't need to pay for armor if you're not choosy. Alright, so when we're leaving, uh, you can go ahead and 
press cycle, but make sure you crouch as the door opens, because I'm telling you, you will get sucked out if, if uh, the wind's strong enough, blowing the right direction. And you can see the wind's blowing, so it's a good thing I'm crouching, or I'd be I'd be blown, incapacitated. And let me tell you, nothing's more depressing than when you're doing a package pickup and you get incapacitated as you're leaving with the package. That's just really unpleasant. All right, now it's very depressing when that happens. It's like at least I, if I get a shot in a uh, in a bunker, I'm like, okay, well that was I was an idiot. I I should have done better, you know. But being in incapacitated because you walk down a flight of stairs is just ugh, the worst. Okay, just have a couple more to cover. All right, so here we are back at Everest Harbor, which you really wouldn't know because, well, it's on the dark side right now. So another tip uh, for when you're approaching a space station in, in uh, this state where it's dark, if you just press the tab key to do a scan, you'll get an outline of it so you know, you know well, maybe I don't wanna fly right to the center of it because that would be bad. Don't want to bump into the station. So that's what I do. I just kind of tab on the way in. Get an idea of where I am and where I might want to be. And what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to land the C2 and I'm going to show you two more tips that I found really important when I was uh, well one of them is very important one of them isn't really but uh, very one of them is very important uh, for landing especially in hangars uh, probably doesn't matter I mean it's all definitely very helpful oh there we are it's definitely very helpful with large ships like the C2 and the Carrick and, and others but in general it's, it's kind of useful so let's get a landing space here landing a Get a hangar here. Please proceed to bay. Oh, well, that's nice. They actually gave us one right in front. Just going up here. So, when I first started playing uh, last year, in February, the uh, subscriber ship, which you get for free to use for a month, was a... Uh, uh, that was a, a Crusader Hercules C2, this ship basically, and I thought it was great because I wanted to get into cargo running anyway, and here I had a free ship to use, so I was all for that. Um, the problem was I'd never flown anything larger than my Avenger Titan, so as you can imagine, you know, flying Avenger Titan is pretty easy. You don't, I never had to go to camera view, which is what I'm going to show you here. I was perfectly fine, really. I, I could land without ever, you know, seeing the outside of my ship or seeing the landing pad or anything. It was never a problem. And then I started flying this guy, and it just scared the bejeebies out of me because I felt like, well, first of all, why is, to me, it just feels weird that the center of the ship is not what, you know, where my little crosshair thing is here, you know? I feel like it should be a little to the right, but whatever. Anyway, uh, it was a very big, sh it's a very big ship, and I just wasn't used to it. And trying to land this thing in a hangar without camera view, I, I can't imagine doing, I mean, yeah, I could probably do it, but I wouldn't want to do it regularly. And I fly this thing a lot for uh, cargo, and, which means half the time I'm landing just like this in a, in a hangar. So at this point, you know, put down the landing gear. It's up to you if you want to have the light on. I 
I mean, if I turn it off, I probably won't. Eh, that's actually pretty good. So, at this point, though, I can move in a little bit, but at some, at, at some point, I really need to go to camera view. And to use camera view, so I'm, I could probably fit in here without using camera view, but eh, I wouldn't trust it. So to use camera view, you press F4, and now you're looking, basically you're orbiting your ship, and obviously the side view is not really what I want. So I'm going to hold down the Z key, you got to hold it down, and now the mouse is no longer moving the ship instead of it's just changing your view around your ship. I can still use the W, S, A, D, Q, and E to move the ship, but the mouse doesn't do it. And spacebar as well. So I'm going to spacebar just a little bit. I don't think I'm quite high enough. And then I'm just going to slowly creep in. And I'm going to be watching my sides. Especially watching my bottom. Make sure I'm lined up with the center of the hangar. Like I said, I, I, I look how tight that is. Now the Carrick is even worse. I mean, this actually, that's a lot of room compared to the Carrick. Carrick has all really, I'd say, one meter on either side. So there you go. So camera view, hold on to Z key, don't let go, because if you let go, the mouse starts controlling the direction of the ship. So hold on to Z key, and just usually I'm just moving forward anyway, or going down or going up, you know. And I could scooch a little to the left or a little to the right if I want to. You know, sometimes I have to if there's not enough room on either side. So anyway, once the ship is all the way in, so anyway, that's, this is a camera view. So very, very helpful. Uh, you've probably used it with your, with your, um, uh, uh, I guess it's called an avatar or whatever, your person, you know. But I bet you, uh, but like I said, when I first started playing, I had no idea you could do this. And when I found out about this, I'm like, that just made landing the Caterpillar, landing the Carrick, <laughs> Landing the C2 so much easier in hangars, because otherwise it's, it's almost impossible. All right, so for the last tip um, is something called Auto Land. It's a lazy person's landing service. Uh, basically, you just hold down the N key for like two seconds or so, and the ship will land itself. You have to be within 10 meters, or 20 meters, 10 or 20 meters of the landing pad, must be 20. Yeah, 20 meters. You are clear to launch. And as long as you're within 20 meters, uh, hold down the N key, and I guess it must be tractor beams, or I don't know. Something something causes your ship to land without you actually having to do it. I like that for... Um, sometimes it's nice just to make sure I'm actually centered in the hangar. Uh, sometimes I'm not actually here to leave... Maybe I'm, I'm just coming in for something. Maybe I'm meeting somebody and they're going to come in and join me on my ship. And from this point, I want to be able to leave again, but I want to make sure I'm... I, I would like to make sure I'm centered in the hangar so I don't have to worry about uh, flying straight out. Um, so, uh, really, it's just being lazy. But it's nice. It's, it's convenient. So that is... That is it for my... Uh, for my uh, tips for new players. Uh, I hope you found them useful. And um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Scrap Jet out.